guys. Alright, so all the mid-month readings are done. All of the general readings are done. So, I have openings for a few readings if anybody needs. Uh, today I wanted to go over the Kabbalistic system of mental magic. So, I am learning that I don't really need all these tools. Um, I don't really need the cards anymore. I don't need the board anymore, which is odd. So it's really, really weird. It's, it's really weird. So, what is going on? Oh, sorry. All right. So the Kabbalistic system of mental magic. It's interesting. It's really interesting, and I think you guys will like this. So, all right. So one, start by writing down on a piece of paper the following statement. So. Um, this is just a, you know, you can do your statements differently from what this says. So, it is my will to use all of my abilities to obtain the following goal. And then fill in your goal. Fill in your goal, what you want, what you need. So, alright. And then A, at the end of the statement, fill in whatever it is that you want. Be simple. And be specific. So, you have to be simple and very specific. The subconscious is very tricky. So it doesn't understand, I don't want. All it hears is, I don't. So it's picking up, I don't. So if you're saying, I don't have enough money, that's what you're going to have, not enough. So you have to say, I have enough. We all know that, though. So, alright, so be specific. M most people do not want money. So, they want money for a purpose such as a better lifestyle, a better car, etc. Of course. So, if you have a long-term goal, choose the first step towards that goal. If it is your aim to be a teacher, it should be your first goal to getting the training necessary for you to teach. Follow the synchronicities. Follow the synchronicities, the inspired actions. Work or act on your inspiration. If it feels good, you're doing it right. So, Alright, so if it's your goal to do anything noble, such as to serve, this is a very good idea, but serve in what way? Don't just write down you want to serve for your country because you might end up in another country. You might end up in Iraq. So be specific. So, a doctor serves, but so does a garbage collector or a waitress. So, specifics. Each need vast each needs a vastly different type of training to become to become su successful in that field. So, that's why I do not call myself an occult expert specialist, because this is my area of specialty. It's what I am. Lo I love. It's, it's my passion. It's my work. It's been my life. This is my entire life. Ouija. Paranormal. Occult. Witchcraft. Uh, forging my own path. And it's very true that when you're, you know, young, you obviously, everybody finds Wicca. For some f odd, ungodly reason. Everybody finds a Wicca, and, you know, it just kind of grows from there if you stick with it, and you realize that Wicca is total bullshit, and it was constructed in the 1950s by Gerald Gardner. And then, yes, kaboom, there you go, you're in now in your, what, middle 30s? Yeah, me? We're all in our middle 30s, I think. I'm 21. Seven, no, 17 today. Or 22. So, yes, you eventually notice that you are actually following and practicing what you preach. So, you are learning, and you have collected all that knowledge from different paths, all of these magical systems. So, it's it really does start to pay off. It takes years, but it pays off. Alright, so, where did I go? Okay. Yes. So, you, yes, it's very specific in training what you need for that field. Alright, so two. Now, you're going to make a visual picture of yourself involved in that goal. If you want a car, see yourself in the car. If you want a better lifestyle, see yourself wearing something which represents that lifestyle, etc. This image will be used for visualization. So, if you can't visualize that well, make the picture move. So, just rapidly move. Close your eyes. Side to side, move your eyes. Rapid eye movement back and forth. And really start to visualize yourself in that new car. Or wearing that new suit. Or doing those, you know, readings. Right now I'm just I'm seeing a lot of readings being done. And that's my goal. So. Okay. 
All right. So, and then A, always involve yourself in the image. Always, you have to see yourself. So it's very easy. Tell yourself that you're not gonna visualize it and you'll visualize it the easiest way. Like right now, you guys will not visualize the Baphomet ring on my hand. Don't, don't you dare visualize that ring. Don't you dare. Are you visualizing it? Probably. Don't you dare visualize a pentagram. Don't. Don't even think about it. Don't visualize a tree. Don't visualize the tree of life. Not at all. It's very easy. A little bit of re reverse psychology goes a long way. So, alright, now B, remember some people cannot visualize to an extent where they can see something in their mind's eye. So if you cannot thus see still no problem but you must know that what you are visualizing you had better develop astral vision um, is really existent um, on the astral plane so not just believe this to be so but know it to be so so here we are having to really really up our faith and know what we want you have to feel it if you need money, if you need whatever it is, you have to know exactly what you want. You have to feel it, you have to smell it, you have to taste it. So if you want, I want sushi really bad. So I can visualize myself eating that sushi. Um, it's, you know, sustaining my body, it's giving me, you know, nutrients and, you know, fish oil for my joints and the fibro and it helps. So I can boom, boom, boom. Visualization is very easy for me. Very easy. All right, C, for help, you can make a treasure map. Hmm, what about a treasure map? So, to do this, simply go through magazines or newspapers and cut out images of your goal. All right, this is not the secret. This is far from the secret. I feel like I'm fuzzy. So don't even think that this is anything to do the secret because it's not so a vision board of course is wonderful to use all right so now paste them together on a piece of cardboard or paper to form a magical collage if you prefer you may draw the images rather than cut them out so drawing them pour your energy into it when you're drawing your images make money symbols really pour your energy let it flow from the hand whatever hand you used to write with your dominant hand. Mine, I'm a righty. And don't force the muscles because it's very common. Um, I, I've done it myself, I still do it. Um, I, when I'm charging, say, a candle, um, I really start to uh, kind of flex my arm muscles and my, uh, my whatever, forearms. Don't do that. Don't force the energy. Just let it go because it will. It, it's already flowing. So, and it's really strange that everything that we want is already in the astral and it's just that it's so hard because a lot of us we don't have enough faith personally no I don't have enough faith nope uh, so it's really hard to actually manifest the bigger the bigger things like the house that's I mean it's not hard it's just very time consuming so, and I'm very, un and I don't have any patience for anything, so. Alright, so be sure to include yourself in the treasure map, either by putting a picture of yourself in the map or writing the word me in the center of your map. Alright, so this is way before the secret came out. So, I wonder where the secret got their secret. Alright, now three, every day for five minutes in the morning, just after you awake, and for five minutes in the evening, just before going to sleep. Repeat the phrase you wrote out in step one, in a firm but quiet voice. So do this only once in the morning and the evening. Do it. Spend the rest of the five minutes prior, or period, either visualizing the image you made in step two, or looking at the treasure map you made in that step. See, smell, taste, feel, and sense the visualization. Everything. Put your all into it. All of your everything into visualizing that. It's, it's amazing. Alright, so... A. Only do this process at morning and at night. However, any time during the day you realize that you are having thoughts contrary to your goal, so immediately begin repeating your magical phrase until the contrary thoughts pass away. Of 
course you're going to have, you're not going to get it. You're, there's no way you're going to get that. Um, your, your ego pops in and says, nope, you don't deserve it. So, that's the ego. It's the stupid, super overweening ego. So, alright, now four, silence is also an important factor in this process. Once you have completed your statement and visualization, forget it. Put it out of your mind, let it go. So, that just means it's manifesting faster. Faster. You just have to know that it is coming. So, um, you are using many cosmic forces in this process. If you talk with others about what you are doing, it sends the energy into discussion rather than into manifestation. If you talk about what you are doing to yourself, such as by wondering about how well you are doing with this Kabbalistic system, you are doubting your success. So, self-doubt is killer. So just do it with all of your heart, know that it will work, and be silent about it. About it. So it does work, it's, it's very true. Alright, so, um, here we go, very controversial figure in the occult world, Aleister Crowley, talks about a time um, he was low on money. Alright, here we go. He did a ritual to raise the money he needed to pay his rent. So, he has such a positive attitude about his magic, that he went into town and spent some of his remaining meager funds on ice cream. Oh, by the way, he did get the money which was necessary to pay his rent. That's how much confidence that you need. Confidence in yourself, confidence in your magic. So, if you're gonna take Nelson Crowley as an inspiration, he achieved many great things. Many great things. And then he went a little cuckoo. So, just don't go crazy. So, five. So here is the Kabbalistic secret promised earlier in this lesson. If you reread some of the earlier material given in this course, you will notice that in one place it is mentioned that the astral plane, also known as the... Oh, wow, I don't know that word. Yeah, yet Zeretic world is related to the emotions. So the secret is that the more emotionally involved you can become with your goal, the greater your chances for rapid success. Sort of. <clears throat> wanting something will have not the success of gotta have something. So, the more worked up emotionally you can get over your desire, especially when starting your desire, doing the visualization, the faster it will manifest. So it's very, very easy. So, like, for instance, I'll feed my lodestones, even when I, uh, they're not, you know, working. Um, they're continuously working because I do feed them, and it just happens to to work. It just all happens to work out for the best. So, alright, where'd I go? Hmm. Oh, here we go. Okay, so that very simply is the Kabbalistic system of mental magic. Pretty interesting, isn't it? So, uh, practice the system daily until you get what you want. Then immediately start anew with another goal. Keep your emotions high, and success must inevitably follow. So, how can you keep those emotions high? How can you keep, um, you know, your thoughts from telling you that you're not going to get what you need, or you're not worthy of what you, what you want, or what you need? So, where would I go? Okay, so some people wonder why the, the peculiar, oh, the peculiar wording. Peculiar. Wow. Some people wonder why the peculiar wording is used for the magical phrase given in step one. So, the choice of words is very important and should always be used. It is my will. So that means that you are using your will, your consciousness, and putting that aspect of yourself in charge of your subconscious. So you have to really get through to the subconscious mind. It's very difficult, but it can be done. So, most people tend to follow, wait, allow uh, their subconscious to control them without even knowing it. So these four words indicate a change in your life. That you are no longer an ordinary person, you are become a tr becoming a true witch. So, um, quote, to use all of my abilities, all of your abilities. So, it is important because it is telling you that your subconscious, that all abilities which you possess, whether you are aware of them or not, are, be, are to be used in achieving the goal. Thus, even if you are not aware of your own innate psychic abilities, your subconscious as a result of being ordered to do so by your conscious um, will, uh, 
will order those powers to be put to use to achieve your goal. So, now on to obtain the following goal, that phrase. So, okay, here the most important word is goal. So this is not a lighthearted wish or a mild desire. This is a goal toward which you will be directing your entire life at this time. If you cannot direct all of your efforts toward that goal, don't even start this process. <laughs> so, let's say that you want an expensive book on magic and you use the Kabbalistic system of mental magic to obtain it. But then, instead of saving your money, you spend it on some records or tapes. This is a message to your subconscious that you do not really want to achieve the goal, or getting the book. I feel fuzzy again. Maybe it's just my eyes. There we go. I'm not too fuzzy there. there that's a lot better. Alright, so... Wow. <clears throat> that's pretty cool, though. So, but then, instead of saving, oh, yeah, yeah. So you're just telling your subconscious, no, you don't want it. So this is really cool. This is very interesting mental magic. So although in this particular instance, um, I'm saying that it is important to save your money for the book, I'm not saying that it will be necessary to spend all of that money for the book. Nah, nowhere in the magical phrase of intent does it say how you are to obtain the goal. Let it come to you as it will. But you must still use all of your abilities to obtain it, so... In this case, there we go. it means saving your money in the instance of Crowley mentioned earlier. He had done a ritual to obtain money, all of the money he would need so that he could pay a rent bill. What little he had at the time was not relevant since he was going to go out and get work to earn money. So, very interesting stuff. I mean, very interesting stuff. It's just incredible and it works. So. Alright, so to recap the Kabbalistic system of mental magic briefly. Alright, now one, come up with a specific goal and write it down in given form. So, goal, whatever your goal is. Two, come up with a visualization which involves you. Use a treasure map if it will help. So, make sure you see yourself at the end result, not how, not the why, or how you're going to get it. Just visualize the end result with you in it. So three, recite the goal and do the visualization for five minutes when you wake, five minutes before going to sleep, and becoming well, become emotionally involved with the goal. So big time, get those emotions going, get them going like crazy. So four, if something comes to mind which contradicts your goal during the day, immediately repeat the magical phrase like a mantra. So use that as your mantra until that goes away, until the contradictory thoughts is gone. Thought is gone. So, very interesting, very interesting, I, I'm just, I, I love this, so, I just, I really do, I love this, and then it goes on to tell you about, you know, the white magic, gray magic, black magic, which, you know, I don't, can, I don't attribute colors to magic because it's neutral, so, we have part two, so throughout this course, um, I have held that there are three types of magic. White magic, which has been the focal point so far in this course. Gray magic, which we have begun to investigate and which will occupy most of the rest of this course. Uh, almost all magic is gray magic, so. And black magic, which will only be discussed in terms of how to avoid doing it, either purposely or accidentally. So these definitions of, of types of magic have used the purpose um, and outcome of a magical ritual or act determine the type of magic we are doing. As an example, any technique or rituals used to help us achieve, us achieve a closer relationship with divinity is defined as white magic. Any techniques, so any techniques, so when using the terms white, gray, or black magic purpose or result, it determines definition. So, alright, so I guess there is a little bit of importance in using white magic, gray magic, black magic, that kind of thing. So. There is another definition of magic which is based upon heredity, heredity, the ancient source of the style of magic. There are two major categories based on history, the type of magic we have studied, and for the most part will be studying, is based in the structured city of s the structure of city life. So, all right, it was in the cities where the middle classes first evolved, so it was the, it was in cities where leisure became possibly possible on a weekly, if not daily basis. A merchant who lived in a city or 
city could work from nine to five, whereas uh, those most pe those people who lived and worked on farms had to work virtually from before sunrise to after sunset, and that's very true. Very true. So in the city, people were able to have extra time to learn how to read and study. Thus, the style of magic, which has evolved out of city lifestyles, tends to include long, precise spells, complicated formulas, and sometimes involved astrological preparations. So, it is a style of magic which is left-brain logic oriented. It doesn't seem too bad. It doesn't seem too hard. So, the city-dwelling middle classes and upper classes had time for leisure and study, so they also had extra and spendable money to afford ritual items. Some of those of these ritual to tools were made of gold or silver, showing that it's some, showing that if some of the magicians were not upper class, then they perceived of they received support or patronage from a wealthy person or group. So wow, the evolution of magic, crazy fun. It's crazy, crazy. I think so. But by the Middle Ages. Many cities were built on a high ground, near a source of fresh water. Being on a high ground was necessary because it was an easy place to defend against attackers. So, also such city would have a natural drainage system which, especially after rain, it would help prevent flooding and the health problems associated with uh, standing stagnant water. So, the style of magic which we have been learning in this course, the style of magic which developed in the cities located near high ground is known as high magic or art magic. Art magic. Hmm. So, every culture had, has, and will have its own magic. So, even if, even as you read this, a style of magic known as brujeria is evolving in the Latino uh, barrios of major U.S. cities. So, um, at the time, high magic or art magic was developing in the cities. So too were the magical systems, those people who lived outside of the cities. It was the magic of the farmers and hunters and animals, herders, which evolved from even earlier magics of the earliest prehistoric tribes of hunters and gatherers by way of various state-run religio-magic systems. So everything was incorporated, everything. When the slaves were brought over from Africa into the port of Haiti, there we go. It's the same as New Orleans. They brought their, you know, practice of magical, you know, um, their gods and goddesses with them, their spirits that they worship with them. So, farming life has always been difficult. It sucks. In the Middle Ages, there were only basic tools and no real insecticides, fertilizers, or irrigation systems which worked at the turn of a faucet. True, the Nile culture and the Aztec culture did have the irrigation systems, and it is also true that people knew that certain herbs uh, would keep away, you know, uh, certain insects and uh, manure could be used to fertilize the soil. Still, the people of 100 to 4,000 years ago had nothing to compare to our modern green revolution. I like green revolution. So that's crazy. That's just really crazy how it just kind of just evolved and, you know, it just wraps itself around what our belief systems are and where we live. And, you know, if you live in the city, it's completely different. If you live out here in the country, like I do, with nobody around, I can go outside and drive my head fucking ass off. <laughs> my hands until they're beat red and blistered. And nobody will. I don't know, I guess, you know, I, I do, you know, do the ram's horn, the one that I got, I showed you guys, like, a month or two ago, um, I do go outside after, you know, certain rituals and stuff, and before certain rituals, and on specific days, and I will blow the ram's horn, and it does, you can actually hear all the coyotes start to howl from the woods, so we have woods over there, back there, over there, then nothing over there, just so it's all fields, woods, cemetery crossroads it's really cool all right so so these hard working farmers could not take the time to learn how to read or study arcane magical texts and lore so that's totally understandable who has time if you're working on a farm who actually has time for anything nobody so instead they learned the laws of the universe from the gracious mother nature 
So that would be the Hermetic Principles, the laws of nature. So, they saw how the moon affected their lives and crops. They saw the importance of Oh, air, earth, heat, and water, having little knowledge of writing, their magic was passed orally. So, they developed their own language and codes. They studied and learned the powers of the plants around them. And following the Roman and Greek pantheon, they worshipped a beautiful goddess represented by the moon and a strong god of the hunt represented by the sun. So, I don't know if it would be Selene for the moon. That's who I worship. Or Baphomet. Although there is no evidence that there was a there was ever a universal goddess religion, so there is ample evidence of a goddess tradition in virtually every ancient culture. So we don't have any any evidence of a purely goddess religion for his in history. So, um, according to one respected author, the ancient Hebrews worshipped a goddess along with their god and even had an altar to her in the first and second temples up to 70 AD. So today many Christians hold Mary in a very high esteem, to the point where some are accused of something, Mary, Mary loyalty, Mary loyalty. Jews still honor the Sabbath bride and welcome the coming of the moon. Jewish, I love Jewish people, they're amazing, that's all I have to say. In Hebrew, the word moon is Levena, which also happens to be the name of the ancient Semitic moon goddess. Semitic. Semitic, yeah. Semitic. Sem Semitic. Semitic. Yes. Oh my goodness. Alright, so perhaps you remember from your study of history, the so-called Rite of Kings. Do you guys remember that? I do. So this included such things as the prick of the crops. <clears throat> Pick of the crops and animals raised by those who lived in their kingdoms. So the right to ride through the crops on a farmer, oh, of a farmer who lived in a king's domain. Even the right to have sex with a woman for her husband on their wedding night. In return, the king was expected to protect the farmer from foreign invaders. In, such, in time of such danger, farmers and their families could run to the king's castle for protection. So they did not need to live and work on high ground. So, further, the terracing of hilly areas was a terrible chore. God, yeah. It was far easier to live in a lower-lying lands, where there were both natural irrigation from rains and washing of f fertile soil from the higher areas by that same rain. The magic which developed from these cultures is known as natural magic or low magic. Different, very different. where do we go? So it is important to point out that there is no quality judgment or moral judgment based upon the names of high magic and low magic. So they are simply just different methods of achieving the same goals, primary differences between them being cultural and technical. So as the centuries passed, the cultures of both city dweller and rural inhabitants developed problems arose for practitioners of high and low magic. So this is where organized religion comes in. Organized religion, especially Christianity, in the form of the Roman Catholic Church, hierarchy, and later even more so by the various Protestant authorities, did not want people who either could work or were believed to work miracles. Only those who were involved with the various churches were supposed to be able to do this. So, a lot of repression. This high, oh, the high magic practitioners were able to present a facade of Christian worship in their practices and were for a while able to avoid persecution. That's why organized religion is awful, terrible. So, so um, not so for the people who did low magic. Not only could they do things that the organize, organized religion did not like, magic, but they also worshipped deities who were not the same as the ones worshipped by those in power. They organized, the organized religions, tried to wipe these people out. So, they were referring to, referring to them as people of the health, the heath, or heathens. Similar, similarly, in Latin, the expression meaning those of the earth, 
Paganus became then insulting term. Oh, an insulting term for pagan. Oh, I didn't know that. Originally, the words pagan and heathen were just descriptions, but they became virtually a rallying cry for genocide. Oh, wow. That's really different. Initially, the worst problem was not that these people practiced low magic, but that they worshipped different gods and goddesses. Alright, so they didn't worship the same god as the church. So, the church thinking that they're all-powerful and almighty, which you're not. No church is. Repress them. So, um, in the 6th century of the Pope, <coughs> century the Pope wrote, quote, If heathen temples are well built, they should be purified from the worship of demons. So, in this way, the people seeing their temples are not destroyed may flock more readily to their accustomed places of worship. So, of course, to the Pope, any god which was not his god must be a demon. <coughs> true so but conversion was not enough so the organized Christian religion took an image of the Roman Catholic God Pan wait did I read that right but conversion was not enough so the organized Christian religion took an image of the Roman God okay the Roman God Pan honored oh horned hooved and tailed and said that this image was the image of their chief chief source of evil Satan that's ridiculous so wow that is so stupid so try to find the description of Satan anywhere in the Bible oh that that specific description so thus heathens and pagans who still worshipped their god and goddess were told that they were worshipping evil demons these people wanting to worship their own deities became Satan worshippers. Stupid. Alright, to organize religion. It still, no, it still does to this day. It still happens. So. Hmm, as such they lost their human status. Oh, and were persecuted, tortured in an unbelievably foul ways, and killed in numbers, with which some authorities claim rival or surpass the Jewish Holocaust uh, perpetrated by the Nazis so oh, wow that's scary that's really scary because I mean it, it's very odd you know people I see you know articles of people being you know arrested in different countries for practicing their faith and I don't know it's just really fucked up I'm very grateful to be where I am so wow but the pagans were not destroyed by the Nazis they were victims of Catholics and Protestants. So, those pagans who escaped hid from their persecutors. Persecutors, their religious aspects went underground, and those people became known as healers and masters of the herbs. Wow, that's kind of that's sad. So, <coughs> um, yeah, all the religious aspects, yes, went underground. Much of the various traditions was lost. So. Some of the women who kept up their skills as healers and herbalists also remembered some of the religious aspects which they taught to their daughters and sometimes to others. So, it's very good that these people actually pass oral tradition, pass oral tradition down. I froze. So, where do I go? Okay, so they became known quite appropriately as wise women. So it is. It was said that uh, these people could bend reality to their wills. Okay, so a word used to describe these people could bend reality, uh, which means to bend is Wicca, Wicca, or Wicca in English. This word became witch. I don't like that word whatsoever. So this has been a very brief generalization, generalized history of witches. So I make no claims to its perfection in any way, and there are many books which can give you a far more detailed history of this subject um, than this book can in a few paragraphs. What I do want to make clear is that most is that witches do not worship the devil, do not perform the inf infamous black mass, do not kiss the devil's ass, hindquarters. There were all 
These were all fictions created by organized Christianity to cast the light, a bad light, on those who worshipped in a different light. Wow. So every school child in the U.S. knows that in 1492 Columbus sailed the ocean blue. What the children are not told is that the same year Isabella and Ferdinand ordered all Jews to leave Spain, convert to Christianity, or be killed. Remember the Jews held the secrets of the Kabbalah, which is the source for high magic. So some Jews left, others converted or pretended to do so, others hid in the countryside, aided by the people of the countryside, many of whom were witches. So the same sort of thing appears to have happened all over Europe, with witches protesting or protecting Kabbalistic Jews, and in some cases, Jews protecting witches. I always knew that there was a connection. I always knew that there was a connection, and that is amazing. So, wow. So with, yeah, witches protecting Kabbalistic Jews, and in some cases, Jews protecting witches. So at this time, uh, there came to be a slight mixture between the high magic of the Kabbalists and the low magic of the witches, as we shared sh uh, gratefully with the other. So some people have asked me how this could be possible, considering that Jews are given the injunction, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. So, well, it meant poisoner. It was never witch. It was referring to people that poisoned other people with berries uh, and, you know, spiking their, literally their, their beverages. So, first off, that is an incorrect translation from the Hebrew. So, but don't take any word. But don't take my word for it. Find a translation of the Old Testament in a Jewish bookstore and it will look and look it up for yourself. Exodus 22, verse 17. So the correct translation actually reads, Thou shalt not suffer a sorceress to live. So in context, the Hebrew refers not to so much a sorceress as it does to a poisoner. And so it is translated in other parts of the Bible. In other words, this was not an injunction against witchcraft, but against murder. I love that. So, the Kabbalists knew this. They would welcome their magically oriented brothers and sisters. Also, since, um, Rabbinical, I hope I said that right, Rabbinical Judaism came to the forefront after the destruction of the Second Temple in 70 AD, religious tolerance has become a Jewish tradition. They accept, they are very loving and accepting. Although they, some people claim that this is becoming less and less the reality today. I don't know. It just keeps going from back, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So, um, here's a brief series of important dates in the history of witchcraft, with a special focus on Britain and the United States. So, some of the dates are approximate. So, this is pretty cool. This is really interesting. Alright, circa 1500 BC, um, the Picts, original inhabitants of Britain, built Stonehenge. Their religion was lunar-based, with a major emphasis on devotion directed to a goddess. Hmm. Circa 500 BCE, the Celts settled in Britain and taught the concept of reincarnation. Their religious leaders, the Druids, were solar-oriented, and major emphasis in worship and was placed on, upon a god. So as the Celts and Picts um, interrelated and intermarried, the god and goddess became equally adored. So from this union evolved traditions which, in a reconstruction, reconstructed form, are today known as Wicca, today commonly pronounced yeah, Wicca. Ugh. So there are other reconstructions which go back to other areas of Europe, especially the Norse, Germanic, and Italian traditions. So. All right, 1313 CE, um, the Edict of Milan made Christianity the legal religion of the Roman Empire. Christian temples were built in the old sacred gathering places of the pagans. It's ridiculous, it really is. So, for, for, uh, 447 CE, the Council of Toledo defined the devil as the personification of evil in Christian doctrine. It was a simple move to equip him with horns to identify him with the horn god of the hunt, Worshipped by pagans. Pen. So, ridiculous. Alright, 550, uh, 553 CE. The Council of Constantinople? 
declared the doctrine of reincarnation to be hersery. Prior to this, it had been taught by some Christian sects. Circa 700 CE. Liber Potian uh, something, Liber something, Book of something, of Theodore, there we go, forbade the practice of dancing in animal masks, especially those of horned beasts. This, been had a this had been a religious practice of some pagans. Still is. So, uh, circa 1900 CE, King Edgar reg yeah, regretted that the old gods were much more worshipped in his dominions than the Christian god. Wow. So, um, 1100 CE, the death of William Rufus, who was, it is believed, which. 1303 CE, the Bishop of Coventry was accused by the Pope of being a witch. These people are ridiculous, literally. Um, 1324 CE, the trial of Dame Alice Ketteler in Scotland, the first witch of Scotland, Ch on charges of witchcraft. She took refuge in England among her highly placed friends and was acquitted. Uh, largely because of her wealth and status. Wow. This literally goes on. 1954 CE, Witchcraft Today by Gerald Gardner is published. The first book about witchcraft is self vowed witch. What Gardner described valid as it may be is actually composed from old books, quotes from Aleister Crowley, ideas and poems from Doreen Valentine, and his own genius. So, that's where Wicca came from. Hmm. Wow. This is just crazy. It is really crazy. It goes through the, uh, the Salem Witch Trials, the other witch trials of Europe or England. Everywhere. Hmm. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think? It's very interesting, isn't it? It's a very good book. Very good book. It's amazing. So yes, I just think that's crazy that they did that. Just everything was all just... Everything was all screwed up by organized religion. Kabbalistic system of mental magic that is amazing. That is something that I really need to do. That I'm actually going to do. So. I don't need a vision board. At all. Alright guys, let's do some coffee talk. See who is uh, telling me I need Jesus today. Pretty funny. A lot of people do. Sorry, no I don't. Are you guys enjoying the mid-month readings? I think I did Scorpio twice. So, that's okay. Alright. Um, true, truth be told. Hi. Hey, dude. Hi. Woman. Shungite comes in more than one class or type. Yes, I know. If you use the Shungite Elite Noble nuggets to cleanse and energize your water, they don't have a flavor. Neither does regular Shungite. They are shiny, semi-hard, and not powdery on the outside. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. I have, um, some Eli Shungai. Alright. Hi, Kim. How are you? How is everything? I hope well. Alright, thank you for this reading. I'm trying to conserve the energy. That energy, for sure. I always look forward to your videos. It makes my day. Aw, I love you. Thank you. You're awesome. Alright, Hexhagen. Hi. Aw. Are you Virgo? I'm happy. Um, Soul Therapy Tarot. Hi. How are you? Is that what that means? When your ears ring? I thought it was telling you to pay attention. I don't know. I don't know. When your ears ring, when your ears are ringing here, they say it's somebody talking about you? I have no clue. Just really, really weird. I don't know. Old wives tales. Like the, uh, video. Or, not the video, but the onion. The full moon. If you have a wart on your hand, cut an onion, or not an onion, but 
potato in half. Uh, rub one part of the potato on your wart. Go outside, bury it. Boom, it's going to be gone. And that does work. I don't know how, but it did. Alright. Uh, Wiggles. Is that an old Jeffree Star video? No. Jessica Andrews. Thank you, Ryan. For what? What did I do? What did I do? Oh, Scorpio mid-month. I think I did it twice, sorry. <laughs> You're welcome, my love. Very much. Alright, Lady Witch. Hello. Ella on Molly was hilarious. Oh my god. That was incredible. I want to do that. You've never tried it. I like it. Okay, I was catching lots of references to other shows and thought it was cool. Even the nod to Chewbacca was just sweet. That's funny. Lauren and Ed were not fake by a long shot, but certain things were overstated for the cash that could be generated true. That doesn't make them liars. No, just my opinion. Can't believe people still are focused on Zozo. Yeah, I know. I can't believe it either. It's stupid. It's so stupid. Oh, doll. You of all people don't need Jesus sending my best to Monsieur Chico. Monsieur. Aw, thank you. He was such a good boy that yesterday. He was. He was so good. He, some giant, giant, I mean giant, blonde lab. It was a male blonde lab tried to hump him. Yeah, oh my god, it would have crushed him, so I had to grab him really quickly. Poor dog. Poor dog. Natheria Fade. Hi, love. I'm so sorry about your aunt. No, it's okay. Um, oh my god, the best season of Lucifer, Lucifer yet. I have questions. I have many questions. Why did- why? Why? I mean, he told Chloe he loved her. Rejected Eve. Where, where the hell did Eve go? Where, where did, you know, what, what's Lucifer gonna do? He's gotta go back to L.A. I, he's gotta find a new king, somebody. And I wanna see the baby. I want to see this baby. I am, I have so many questions. Yes, it's so amazing. I got a kick out of all the supernatural references and a nod to the Game of Thrones, I know. Uh, were there any references to other shows that I missed? Buffy? the Vampire Slayer. There's a very, very heavy undertone of Buffy. What else? It refers back to uh, Lauren German's, what is it, um, Chicago Fire. She played in that uh, series. So when she's visiting the Vatican or, you know, the, that father the investigator for the Vatican, um, you can see uh, the cross between Hitler and uh, Lucifer, you can see Lucifer Morningstar, his name written in that book to check in. Um, but it wasn't his fault. These, you know, these occurrences weren't his fault. He was there to punish those people, so. Obviously. Yeah, there's a lot of references. So it's pretty cool. Alright, Witch of the Black Rose. Hi, love. First, had a great Mother's Day Sunday with Satan. Love you. I love you too. Jasper Quinzel. Hello, my hubby. Us Leos are all heart. All about heart. Can I get a rar from all my fellow Leos? Alright, John Hirsch. Libras unite. My dad's a Libra. Terrible. <laughs> no. I'm kidding. Alright. Megan Tarot music. Oh my sprite, what a blessing. Oh, hi love, how are you? Of course I remember you. Alright, Roth, 708. I'm a... what is that? Cancer? Oh, hi. Alright, um... Jen Zach, shout out my love, how are you? Marcella Mendez, hello. How are you? Alright. Alright, Snooky Onseta, hello. Daria, hi my love, oh my sis, I love you so much. Goth Medley, hi my darling, how are you? Lily Moon. Hmm, who else am I missing? Madame Sophia. Thank you for, for helping me, saving my ass. Very much. No idea. Alright, Bill O'Reilly. You're going to love this video because it has to do all with the book, Modern Magic. You're going to, I love it. I love that book. It's amazing. Beautiful session. Snooky. Thank you, my love. 
All right, Amanda Long, shout out. Hello, spring trap trap, I love. All right, Magical Mermaid, uh, Fire Torch Paranormal HTD. Hi, it's an Aurora. Hello, shout out. All right, Sierra Jameson. This is spooky. This rating was spooky accurate. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. I love it when people tell me that. I love it. I love... Well, I don't want people to get scared. But I, I, I like that reaction. It's good. Very good. Alright. April Ferguson shout out. Uh, Neil French. Hello. I hope you understood the whole Zozo thing. Jade, hi my love. May Queen, hello. Eerie Covenant, hi. You said Northern, I'm in New York. Um, I am in Indiana. So, about, I don't know, not too far. So, hello my neighbor, up there. Susie Roach, hi my love. Alright, Kate the Witch. Margarita. Um, Pyramid 7, hello. Um, Ways World, hello. Unreal Human, hello. Um, what else? Who else? Hmm. Aw, oh, DJ Scar 17 Willows, hi. Hi, love. How are you? S. Sun. Hello. Huh. Mm -hmm. Dr. Stoner. Hello. I'm not a Virgo king. Trust me. OCD. Mm -hmm. Alright guys. Well, I hope you enjoy. I hope you guys try that out. That little uh, Kabbalistic mental uh, magic system. And yeah, if you do, let me know. Let me know what happens. So... Alright guys, I love you all with all my heart. Life from Venus. All the way back down. And we'll see you guys tomorrow for Witchy Wednesday, definitely. So, alright guys, thank you for watching and I love you all very, very much. So, I will see you guys tomorrow.